Pit Club and welcome to my tutorial on the March 2013 Technique Kit. This month we have a project kit and it features the Bow Bunny Day Timer. It's the planner. We're, we have inserts that go in here, but I'm going to show you how I'm doing the cover. So this is what it looks like. It has the Bow Bunny label on there. I'm going to cover that up. and I'm going to use paper from the main kit with the Prima Engraver line. And I thought it would be a good idea for me to just explain what I'm going to do first and then I'll videotape myself doing it and do it in a fast pace. That way you guys don't have to listen to me yak and have it take a lot of time. I don't want to take a lot of time out of your day. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to be using this black paper and I've already distressed all of the papers and I've inked them using the Distress Ink and Frayed Burlap. I thought this color went really well with these papers. So the basic idea is that it's going to open like this and I'm going to use these lacing metal pieces that are from the embellishment kit and you get six of them and so I'm going to lace that up with this trim that came in the main kit. But I'm also going to put some stuff back behind it so that you don't just see this. Even though it's plain and nice, I want to put something else in there. So I'm going to center that piece right there. And I just want to use pieces, scraps, because I want to be able to use all of my paper. Let's see. I had that plan for that. So it'll go something like this. And it's going to have the binding like this. And you get this mask in the kit. It's so awesome. It's one of the new Prima masks. And what I just decided to do with it, instead of using gesso and stuff, it didn't really fit for me with what I wanted to do with this. I want it to mesh along with it and it just, I tried it out on a little spot and I didn't really like it so I took it off. But what I did do is I used the frayed burlap distress ink again and I used one of these, I don't know if you guys have ever used these, but it's the Fantastic Coloring Tool and it's from Sukineto and I just buy them at Michael's and I cut them and I trim them all the way down to little tiny nubs and what I do with the mask is you just do this and you dip it into the ink and you just color and it comes out pretty good. It's better than using a blending tool I think because you can get more definition especially with these little teeny tiny numbers. I don't think the blending foam really picks that up that well so that's what I decided to do. So I'm going to extend this onto the back. I'm going to use a paper like this. And I'm not going to do too much to the back, but one thing that I did decide that I was going to do is I was going to use some of the remnants of this piece of paper that comes in the main kit. And I'm just going to put this on there like that, and then I'm going to distress that you're just going to be able to see that peeking through and of course it goes like this and I'm going to add all sorts of embellishments too. So that's my basic idea and now I'm going to get started. So I finished putting the paper on the binder and I added some of my embellishments. I have the little Kaiser Craft wood on this part right here on the top and on the bottom and I also put the Ziva Flourish and I have all of the papers that I've distressed. You can't see some of it but that's okay. We don't want it all showing. And this is what the back looks like. And I realize that it's going to be distressed. I mean, it already is. I've done that. But I'm kind of thinking that I need it to be protected a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it with some gloss gel medium.
So I've put a very thin coat of the gloss gel medium on here. I just want to give it a little bit of protection, but I really don't want to see a lot of the gloss gel. It dries clear, but it's still going to have the brush strokes on there and stuff, and I'm okay with that. It looks pretty good. And so I'm ready to move on and start embellishing. I have a couple of things I'm going to do with the cover before I call it done. And the first thing is, is that I'm going to use these laces. And I'm going to use some of the trim that we got in the main kit to lace this up. And I'm just going to use the whole yard. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit and before I get it just right, I'll do that off camera. But that's the that idea and I'll most likely trim a little bit off of here. And then the next thing that I want to do is I want to roll up my pieces of paper again now that I have that gel medium on there and it's dry. The gel medium will really help these stick open. And this is some lace that I'm going to use for my stash. I'm going to put it underneath these, this paper right here. That's why I never glue anything down to the very edge because I'm never for sure about what I'm going to be doing. Be careful with that gel medium though because it will seal the papers together. So I'm going to put those on using some of this. It's score tape. I'm just going to put that on the paper. Now that I've finished my outside cover, I'm going to go ahead and do the inside. And what I thought I would do is because I'm kind of on this kick lately where I want to use all of my scraps. So when I cut open a piece of paper, cut a piece of paper, just a piece of it, I want to make sure I use the whole thing, if not most of it. Because it just keeps my clutter down and I have enough scraps. So that was kind of my goal when I designed this. And the other thing is is that I need this part to be pretty flat. I can't put a lot of chunky stuff because I'm going to be writing. I'll be writing on this side too, but it won't be as bad, I think, if it's a little chunkier over this way. And when I store it, it's just going to be standing up anyway, so it's not going to be like I'm squishing my papers down and folding them if, it's, if it gets real, um, real bumpy. So I'm going to do the back side first. And I'm going to start out with a whole sheet of paper. This is not scraps that I had. But I cut this up to fit exactly in here, and then I distressed it. And on every single one of these pieces of paper, I have used, <coughs> excuse me, frayed burlap distress ink with the blending tool. It's very subtle. I like the way that it looks. It just gives it the right amount of distressing without too brown. You could go with vintage photo if you wanted to, but I think it would be a little too dark. I like the subtlety of this. So I did that with every single sheet of paper that I'm going to put up here, and then I distressed it. Okay, so that's my paper. I'm going to add this piece of ribbon, it's from my stash. I just think it goes well with here, with this paper. So I'm going to use some score tape. And you can see that score tape under there, but I'm actually going to be putting some more ribbon. This came in the main kit. I'm going to layer it on there, again using some more score tape. Love this stuff. It sticks really well. And we got some metal foil tape in the kit, and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it. I've seen it used a bunch of different ways, but I wanted to try something different, and I'm sure someone else has already come up with this, but this is what I came up with. I ran this through my die cutting machine. This is a memory box die, and I painted it with the black gesso that comes in the embellishment kit, and then I kind of scratched it and rubbed it a little bit, and so it's weathered and it looks good now. So because it is a sticker, because it's the foil tape, 
I can just take this off. Oh, I hope it works. I hope I don't ruin it. Pretty tricky, but it worked. I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm going to add some flowers that we got in this kit. Like a little pop of blue will be nice. And I have these extra pieces that I thought I would use also. And this butterfly I got is from Angelica. She's on the design team too. She has an Etsy shop. It's called Little Scrap Shop. And she makes the most beautiful butterflies. I love them. And she has a bunch of them that coordinate so perfectly with this kit with these beautiful browns. I highly suggest buying them. start with this piece right here. I don't want to put it exactly in the crease of this right here otherwise it'll be too bulky. So right after that little bump is the best place to put it. Sorry about that guys, my camera battery died in the middle of me telling you what I was going to do. So now I'm just going to go over some of the things that I didn't say. The things that I thought I said. So I added these three flowers. And I added these two. These are from the embellishment kit. This came in this kit. I just repeated these ribbons from the other page. I added another one of Angelica's beautiful flowers. And I cut this piece out just from my scraps. This is from my stash. We got one of these last month in the embellishment kit. These are the, uh, the sunrise, sunset line. Some of the metal embellishments from Prima. So gorgeous. You could just have a thousand of those. I love them. I put a French doily on there. And then I added some more of the lace that I put on the binders also from my stash. I love lace. I have to have lots of it. So even though I used all of the stuff, all of the lace that came in the kit, I just still needed more. So the other thing that I did, just to finish it off, was on the side I used some more of the metal embellishments. That This one came in the em embellishment kit, the add-on, and this one is from the main kit. So I just added those, and that's pretty much it. And this is what it looks like with all of the inserts in there. It's pretty full. Beautiful inserts. And the engraver line goes so well with this vintage style of stuff. So, give you one last look. And that is my project that I did with the Technique Kit for March 2013. So go to swirlydews.com if you don't already subscribe. We have tons of tutorials. We have great kits. So go ahead and check us out. Thanks for watching.